Hey guys, welcome back to Introduction to Cyber Threat Intelligence. Today we're going to be reviewing one of the most recent cybersecurity strategy for organizations, and that is the intelligence driven security. This is the first of a series of three parts to cover this topic. With no further introduction, let's get right into it. The classic book written by Sun Tzu is an awesome example of what intelligence is. Every battle is won before it is ever fought. The work of preparation, the knowledge, the strategy, everything previous to a battle is what actually counts on the field. Cyber threat intelligence is exactly that. Nonetheless, there are a lot of misconceptions for many implementations where cyber threat intelligence is not well implemented and falls down into a not so productive practices and it actually makes the stuff a lot harder for organizations. Some misconceptions are cyber threat intelligence is, that, is just data feeds and PDF reports. When this is the core purpose of the CTI unit, organizations often fall down to a whole larger trouble because it just means there is more information available without the right context for the organization. That results in more manual work when an incident happens, as we will see in the modules ahead. Another misconception is that it is a research service for the incident response teams. This belief somehow is more counterproductive since the cyber threat intelligence analysts become just an extension of the incident response team without adding the so needed value when attending an incident. And last, it requires a dedicated team of a high pride elite analyst. This misconception is why some organization choose to opt out of having a dedicated cyber threat intelligence unit when the truth is far from that, as we're going to see in the following videos. Now, to counter these beliefs, we can state what cyber threat intelligence really is. Cyber threat intelligence is a unit that includes information and analysis from a rich array of sources, presented in a way that is easy to understand and use, causing a more efficient approach when managing the cybersecurity realm. It is valuable for all the major teams in the cybersecurity organization, and that's why in this course we will be reviewing how every unit in this area will benefit for the presence of a cyber threat intelligence team. And last but not least, the cyber threat intelligence processes can be handled and executed mostly by the existing security staff, and there is no must requirement that needs to be in place rated, rated as a high price. Just as most of working units in an organization, cyber threat intelligence counts with a specific life cycle. The intelligence ci cycle is defined by recorded future as direction, collection, processing, analysis, dissemination, and feedback. This is how the classic flow of cyber threat intelligence goes most of the time. This flow ensures that the cyber threat intelligence activities are aligned with the organization's objective and can provide information with the required meanings. This cycle allows all organizations to follow specific orders in its task and keep all cyber threat intelligence objectives aligned with the organization's ones and in constant improvement which is one of the most important aspects that need to be taken into account in order to maintain cyber threat intelligence effective. Most of the time, I find that graphic representation of concepts are a big differentiator when understanding a topic. So, here we have a sort of graphic flow of the cyber threat intelligence life cycle created by Recorder Future. If you can notice, in the upper left corner of the graphic, we have the direction phase. This represents the first step to take in a cyber threat intelligence life cycle and one of the most important. Because this part, although doesn't take much part of the graphic, it's key to review that all the subsequential activities are aligned to the organization's objectives. Next we can find a transversal section where the first part to take into account are the sources of where the information is obtained. This is a very important process since the right sources 
aligned with the organization's objectives, will provide the Cyber Threat Intelligence Department the necessary information to get the most out of the next steps. In the middle part of the graph, we have the actual Cyber Threat Intelligence manpower. Here's where all the magic, magic takes place. The processes of collection, processing, anal analysis, and disseminations are in charge of the Cyber Threat Intelligence Unit through its security tools and its analysts. Lastly, the output of this phase will go directly to each one of the departments that are getting benefits from the Cyber Threat Intelligence Analysis, and after the intelligence has been used, a feedback is provided so the Cyber Threat Intelligence Unit knows if what they are providing to these units is actually what they want to get. Okay, now that we had a general look of the whole process, let's dive into each one of them. The first part of Cyber Threat Intelligence lifecycle is related to the direction of all, its, all of its activities. This means the path that the Cyber Threat Intelligence Unit must maintain according to the organization's unit. This phase takes care of defining the goals for the Cyber Threat Intelligence program. It also validates that these goals are aligned with the organization goals, and this involves the information assets and business processes that need to be protected the potential impacts of losing those assets or interrupting those processes, the types of threat intelligence that the security organization requires to protect assets and respond to threats, and priorities about what to protect. So, basically, this first part of the cycle will focus on defining the cyber threat intelligence purposes. What are we trying to accomplish? What is the organization going to use the intelligence for? And what units will be using the intelligence collected? And so on and so forth. Because the activities of the cyber threat intelligence are directly aimed to the resources available in the organization, it's important to define what assets are going to be benefit since the beginning. Because when a cyber threat intelligence unit is starting, its capabilities are going to be limited to what the resources are able to do. And most likely, they won't be able to meet everyone's demands if they are too many. Next, we have the collection phase. As we pointed out before, the collection phase will be in charge of obtaining all the information available through their different sources. Let's start by getting the actual definition of this phase. Record the Future in its Threat Intelligence Handbook defines collection as the process of gathering information to address the most important intelligence requirements. This will take into account the purpose of this information once it reaches its destination. Information gathering can occur organically through a variety of means. This includes pulling metadata and logs from internal networks and security devices such as firewalls, switches, and routers, subscribing to threat feeds from industry organizations and cybersecurity vendors, holding conversations and targeted interviews with knowledgeable sources, this item will occur on demand most of the time since it involves very specific information to be obtained. Also, it includes scanning open source news and blogs and scrapping and harvesting, and harvesting website and forums. Also, infiltrating closed source such as dark web forums. Well, all right. This video gave a very wide view of the Cyber Threat Intelligence life cycle and it started to poke around information sources. Right now, we have gone through the first two phases of the life cycle, direction and collection. With this knowledge, we have a better understanding on how the life cycle starts and how it must be aligned with the organization's objective in order to prov provide the intelligence needed. With that knowledge, we're going to open a parenthesis here and head over to the information sources. This topic is crucial, since the source of the information that your cyber threat intelligence will be analyzing should be trust and specific. And if in any case it is not, well, there had to be some additional procedures to involve in the analysis phase in order to make this information trusted. Among the, sur the sources we will be discussing, we will find technical sources such as thread feeds, like domains, IPs, hashes, etc. Media, all the news about new threats, threat, threat actors, and anything that enters to our unit. Social media, 
This one will be very important to have, since it is like real-life feats of threats and actions that are happening around the world. The challenge here is that this information needs to be normalized, since most of the time it comes in a narrative way to be understood by humans, but not the best to be fed to systems. Threat actor forums, these are the forums to most of the time attackers go to when having trouble with malware, with evading an antivirus or that sort of issues. These don't need to be hidden in the dark web, they can be open in plain sight in forums like Reddit or similar. And last but not least, the gold mine, the dark web. This is one of the most important sources of information, but it is the one that consumes the most time and resources since the good inform information is really privileged among their users. And there we have it. I hope this video has really hyped you up in order to prepare to observe the upcoming videos. Okay, goodbye, and I hope you have a nice day.